So thank you for showing up today. Uh, I want to jump into this word. I will. This is scripture heavy. I'm not sure what to expect out of this one, how, what it's going to flow like. Um, our, our pastor that we uh, in, in Loganville, uh, sometimes he will say he's going to treach, which means it's a combination of teaching and preaching. I might just be teaching. I might be treaching. Um, I got a lot of scripture here uh, that I want to share. The, the, the title for today, if you want to write down a title, is uh, Revelation of God, His Name. A revelation of God, his name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was uh, just thinking and praying and connecting with someone. I wish I could take every revelation that God gave me and explain it in a way that everybody gets it. I pray what we do in today is that if, if, you, if you already have this revelation, then amen. Maybe you find another nugget in it. If you don't yet have this revelation, I pray that you get a thirst to have it. I don't know if it's possible for me to translate my revelation. Now, all the scriptures were revelation, but we also know that we'll read something 10 times and the 11th time it means something different to us. That's how God works. So I pray that if anything, we can add, we can just get somebody's curiosity. Do I have that same revelation? Or maybe I do, but I can go a little bit further. So that's my goal for today. So we're going to be talking about names. Now, first of all, we have to understand that the way we do names today is completely than they used to do in the Bible days. Like, we get ultra creative with our names. Actually, it's kind of getting trendy where we're doing these retro names now. Um, I'm, I'm guilty, but mine was by a dream that I named my son Luke. Um, so I know my wife was like, why you didn't tell me your grandpa's middle name was Luke? Well, it didn't have nothing to do with him, but <laughs> amen. Um, but we see these, we, these old school names coming back, Ethan's, um, all these names, uh, Sarah's, these, these, uh, these other names are coming back. Before that, in the 80s, it was about how creative can you be? Portia, Alafuque, Unique, um, all these other names, right? That we would get creative and we wanted to express our creativity through the names of our children. Those are just trends, cultural trends. In the Bible days, it was completely different. Um, the name had more, more to do with the actual individual. I'm going to read this right here uh, from my studies because there's no way I can communicate it correctly. A name is used for everything which the name covers. Everything the thought or feeling of which is aroused in the mind by mentioning, hearing, remembering the name. So in other words, one's rank, authority, pleasure, command, excellences, deeds, etc. I do have a short story I'm going to share. So when I played football, we used to have this character named Storm and Norman. And our coach would... <laughs> Hey Amen. Our coach would always make us do something that we wanted to do. But before he did that, he would say the speech. He would say, and, and y'all bear with me, he would actually say it like this. This is the voice you. Storm and Norman says, you guys are soft. And we'd be like, what, what? Storm and Norman says he's going to run all over you guys. And so we get mad and, then, and he'd be like, you guys got to do 20 bear call, crawls. Bear crawls are tough with your pads on. And then all the kids, we would say together in unison, kill Storm and Norman. Like to this day, if you say Storm and Norman, like I tell the story, I get bumped up because Storm and Norman made me do all these things. But that name was more than just Storm and Norman, which sounds pretty cool. Storm to Norman became this frustration. It became my arch enemy that if I ever caught him on the field, I might even come off the bench because I wasn't getting a lot of playtime in that year. I might even come off of the bench and tackle this dude because he made me do all this stuff. And so sorry, y'all, I digress. I'm coming back to the word. So in the Old Testament, Jewish thought, a name did not justify or distinguish a person. It expresses the very nature of his being. So in the Old Testament times, a name was not only identification, but an identity as well. That makes sense. So it was not just an identification, but an identity as well. So many times a special name was a trip, a special meaning was attached to someone's names. So their name had purpose. Their name had meaning. We talked about Moses a couple of ways. Uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, and because he was drawn out of the water, they named him Moses. Um, Isaac, because they laughed when they said that she was going to, uh, at her old age, have a baby, uh, they named him Isaac, which means he who laughed. And so sometimes it was the story about how you were brought forth. Uh, sometimes it was by a revelation that God had for that individual that he gave to the parents. We see that with John the Baptist. Um, we see that with several. Samuel, we, we see that uh, in, a, in a lot of different places. And so the hard thing that we need to understand, uh, well, not, not the, it's not difficult, but what we do need to understand 
is before we even go any much further, is that a name to, to, in the Bible, a name in these times was not the same way we take a name. And I'm going to pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for bringing us here together, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you would visit us, Lord God. We ask that your presence will make itself known, Lord, miracle signs and wonders, Lord. And whatever you want to do in this moment, Lord, I'll yield to you, Lord. Whatever you want to do, I'll do it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray over this word, Lord, that it will go forth, Lord, if it's possible to give the revelation, if it's possible for it to come through word, through preach word, then let it be. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent, Lord? And I pray that this Lord, this word was sent by you, Lord God. Get Isaac out of the way, Lord. Have your increase. Have a full reign, Lord, today, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have to understand that when we get into names that God gave these names for a reason and not just because it sounded good or it was cute or because daddy was named that kind of like we do. So I just wanted to do that to level set. And again, my prayer is that when we end, when we end up today uh, as, or at any moment in this message that we can get a revelation of really what's going on in the name of God. What does that mean to us? How do we use that? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the first now, so we're going to talk about some of the name, the early revelations of the name of God and it was started off pretty generic, as we'll see. The first thing we have for God is the word Elohim. And some of you may have heard this before. Um, when that was translated into Greek, it's the word Theos, T-H-E-O-S, Theos. And that word just simply means God. But when they define God, and it's not our God, a God. So let's be clear that you may read other historical books in these times where they call someone Elohim. It wasn't our God. It was just a God. And so the, the definition for a God means a, hum, a, a, a transcendent being who exercises extraordinary control in human affairs or is responsible for bestowal of unusual benefits. Amen. If anybody's taking notes, I'll read that one more time. A transcendent being who exercises extraordinary control in human affairs or is responsible for bestowal of unusual benefits. Thank you, Lord. From Elohim, we have other things like El. If you ever seen, the, seen God used as El, um, that also signifies God. Remember, a God, not necessarily our God, but a God, El. One of the earlier revelations when we start to get a little bit of clarity on just who Elohim is, is, is El Shaddai. And you may have heard that before. El Shaddai, God the Almighty. So El, perhaps, is the shortened version of Elohim. And Abraham referred to God in Genesis as El Shaddai. Abraham knew that this God that called him out of his father's house was the mightiest of any other God, for Abraham had experienced his providing and his protection. Abraham didn't initially call him El Shaddai. Abraham came to know him as El Shaddai. That's going to be important right there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, another name we see, El Olam. And that's, I'm messing that one up. I'll tell you that right now. O-L-E-L, -E -L, second word, O-L-A-M. Olam, Olam. Call it what you want, but let me say, let's say what it means. Olam means forever, everlasting, eternity. So El Olam means God everlasting. And I know I'm slow right now. Just, just stick with me. It's going to make sense. El Olam means God everlasting. God forever. They came to know that he was eternal. We have the word Yahweh. So Yahweh is a tricky one. Um, my understanding is still being formulated. So I'm going to ask you to bear with my lack of intelligence on this one. Take what I got. And if y'all, anybody wants to, we can study this one together. Um, because I, I think even the experts don't even know how to interpret this. But we have Yahweh, meaning Lord or Master, and that was the promised name of God. So this name of God, which by Jewish tradition is too holy to voice, is actually spelled, they spelled it Y-H-W-H. -H. Y-H-W-H. -H. Now, it's believed by the historians and theologians that there were vowels in, in between there to actually say a name. But what happens is that uh, the, the Jewish scholars, Jewish people, they have so much reverence for God that they didn't write his name, nor did they say his name, because coming back from the commandment that thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in, in vain. So their concern was so that I'm not sure exactly what vain looks like, 
We take it as meaning that you're not going to add it to a cuss word or use it as a cuss word. It was much bigger than that. It, it, wasn't, it couldn't be used in casual conversation. And to the point that they recorded it as YHWH, amen, and they wrote it, they never said it. Now, the prob the, now, one of the interesting things about this is that nobody even understands how to pronounce it. They had so much reverence for the name of God that, they, that it, it, nobody said it to the point that no one even knows how to pronounce it. So what we call it now is Yahweh. So many of us have heard Yahweh. Amen. So Yahweh is, 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 is the same translation of Lord, but it's referring to God. And sometimes we'll see a translation in English from, from Yahweh to Jehovah. Amen. So the Jehovah's Witness, um, you, you've heard those names before. You definitely heard their name because they knocked on your door. They do a great job of outreach ministry. We need to mimic that. Amen. Brother Rob, you are outreach minister for, for us. We need to get with them brothers and train them and train us on how to be more effective to hit the doors. Amen. So that name translates uh, to, to, they call it Yahweh or they'll call it Jehovah, but we don't even know how to even pronounce it anymore. That's how much reverence. And I just want to that just blows my mind that they have so much reverence for God that the, that the name, that don't, we don't even know what it was anymore. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, also, we have to understand that God used to be an external situation, and we're so blessed to have him, the ability to be able to dwell in the inside. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So then we have Jehovah, which I just mentioned. So the common use of Jehovah is basically the English translation of Yahweh. The chief meaning of Jehovah is derived from the Hebrew word haba, meaning to be or to exist. It also suggests to become. So it can also mean to become. Amen. Or specifically to become known. Oh, my goodness. Amen. To become known. This is thank you, Jesus. This denotes a God who reveals himself unceasingly. Jehovah means to become known that God was going to continue this is kind of want to throw out a little bit of a precursor to where I'm going with this, is that God was to continually be able to reveal who he was to man who he, or who he is and who he will be unto us. Thank you, Jesus. So when we hear like the words like when we see in the scripture it says uh, the he who is, he who was and he who is to come. God is just completely outside of our understanding. God is completely outside of our understanding that we, he doesn't actually transform. As great and as mighty as he is, he always was and he always will be. God is not something in your life that he was in the past that he won't be for you in the future. And you've heard me say this before. Don't think that your best days in the Lord are in your past. Yes, maybe you were able to move around a little bit easier. Yes, maybe you didn't have things dragging you down. I don't care. God is so awesome and what he can become to you that the best work if you believe your best work is still in front of you, not because of you, but because because of who he is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to turn to Exodus. We're going to jump into the scriptures now. Exodus chapter six, verses two through seven. I'm going to be all over the place today, y'all, and I'm going to move through quickly. Amen. So I just want to get you prepared. I'm reading in the New King James Version um, for the for the entire day. And we're going to start off with Exodus chapter six. Verses two through seven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all stick with me. It's going to make sense. I promise. Um, and God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob as God almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from you from their bondage and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and you and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God, who brings you out from the from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Thank you, Jesus. There's a mouthful in there. There's about 10 sermons in there. Amen. So y'all be patient with me that I can that the Lord will use me right here. So when we look in the beginning, in the first verse and he says um, when he says, I am the Lord. And then he also says, 
um, later on that Jehovah, that's YHWH. Now, the first time he revealed the YHWH was actually in Exodus 3. We read it last week or two weeks ago when we talked about Moses being called. Um, and it's, I think it's Exodus 3.15 if you want to just take note of it. And he reveals himself. He says, I am the Lord. And he goes on to say, I am that I am. But he was saying that I am Yahweh. I am YHWH. You don't know me. You think you know me. You don't know me. But let me tell you a little bit about who I am. Amen. So he revealed an identity to them. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so God made a distinction between himself and foreign gods believed on these times. And this is what we also have to reset our understanding. Now, um, we did this in Bible study about a year ago. So if anybody's been with us for that long, you'll remember this when we talked about Abraham and how God used the ministry of Abraham and how God revealed his ministry, his identity, et cetera, to him. Now, what we know is that Abraham, father, believed in household gods. Now, a household god was this idea that um, I needed uh, my harvest to grow in a drought, and it came to me when I didn't expect it, and so I am calling a god for our house. I'll name him what I want to, but because my harvest came and I didn't expect it, it must have been from a god that cares about our family, and so that's my household god. Faith was uh, doing something reading about the, in India, I, don't, I think it's Hinduism, they have three million plus gods. They also believe in household gods. This is not, this is not a new idea. This still goes on right now. Yeah. Now, the problem is we, we're born as Christians. We think it's strange for somebody to think about another god. But Abraham himself thought about other gods. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so they, so we, they may be, have been aware of other gods, but their god was the mightiest. Right. So uh, God, uh, Abraham became to know God as El Shaddai, that I know there's gods. My dad taught me about them. I, I probably claimed them as a youth. But now I know that I'm attached to this God who's mightier than all because I've seen what he's done. How when I went into Egypt, when I thought there was a famine, how he provided, I, I came out of the situation blessed. And Abraham had an uh, had a idea about how this God was different than other gods, that he could do things that all the household gods put together just couldn't. And so he said that, uh, I don't know your name. He didn't believe in necessarily a name for him, but he knew that he was the mightiest. And so now this El Shaddai, the mightiest God, is now revealing that not only am I the mightiest God, I want you to call me YHWH. I want you to call me Yahweh. We'll call him Yahweh. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so I, Abraham, he never checked Abraham at the, to this point. He didn't check Abraham about the other gods. Now, it does come in Deuteronomy 6, 4, or actually comes in the, in the, in the commandments that thou shalt have no other God before me. But that was before Isaac. I mean, that was after Isaac. That's after Jacob. And so we know that God, El Shaddai, Yahweh, put a covenant with the seed of Abraham. And he brought them into a covenant promise that he would bless Abraham and bless his seed. Thank you, Lord. And so when you hear the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, what they're doing is identifying with the covenant of El Shaddai, who is now known as Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. Amen. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. So what I'm what I'm building up for us is that they come to know him by experience. I'm going to read verse seven over again. I will take you as my people. That's the covenant. And I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. -H, I'm revealing this. Your God, personal now, not a God, not the mightiest of gods, your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of Egypt, of the Egyptians. In other words, you're going to now know me by the very works that I do. When I bring you out of Egypt, you'll be able to identify who I am by what I can do. Hallelujah. I'm going to let that sit for a second. I hope you understand. They didn't know. They didn't. Yahweh, Y-H-W-H was a name. But he said more than that. That's my name. And you can call me by my name. But I want you to, I, to take my name and take it through my what I do for you. I want to be associated what I'm able to do for you. Not with my name. My name is, was not this important yet. But what, I, what you need to know is I'm the one, the same one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that same God that you're a covenant to and that can bring you out of the hand 
of Egypt. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so this is how they become to know God. And so the God gave them many, many revelations. Uh, there's, there's several of them. I'm not going to touch on all of the revealed names of God, but we are going to hit on a few in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Exodus 3, 5, we talked about it a moment, that God says, I am that I am. And when we talked about this two weeks ago, what it was saying is God is that I'm whatever I need to, to be for you whenever you need it. Hallelujah. I am for you whatever you need, whenever you need me to do it. So God was more concerned about how about uh, they, they understood who he can be for them than, than actually the name. Because the, the, oh glory. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how you know a person. I'm going to just point out my brother Rob right now. Y'all know bro brother Rob through helping with the men's group. Y'all know that he comes on on Wednesday and drops nuggets on us all the time. You know that he's been faithful to promise. Rob is an IT guru, and I know he's cringing right now because he's very humble. Rob is an IT guru. But because I told you his name is Robert Crater, you don't know him that way. I know him that way because I've, 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 I've got a glimpse of what he is able to do. Thank you, Lord. So I can't say that because I know Robert Crater is an IT guru. If I have an IT networking problem, that's who I should call. But as I experience Robert Crater and what he's able to do, I can now take this name and associate it with how it blesses me and how what it can do for me. And that's what God, how God reveals itself. So in Genesis 22, 14. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to try to push through this, y'all. Y'all bear with me. Hallelujah. Genesis 22, 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. And what happens right here, this is right after uh, God had, had tested uh, Abraham and said, bring your son Isaac into the, to be a sacrifice unto the altar. And Abraham had a great faith in that moment that he brought him and he tied the boy down. I don't know what he's about to do with him, but he was ready to see the hand of God. He was ready to see what God would do. And right when he was about to take that knife to his son, there's a, a ram in the bush. The Lord provided. And so he, he named that place and he became known to him as Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. So not only is he El Shaddai, the almighty God, and not only is he Yahweh, not is he only the God that, uh, or, or actually at that point he only knew him as El Shaddai, but he's also the God that will provide. So now I can call him Jehovah Jireh as well as El Shaddai. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Exodus 17. 14 through 16. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I am absolutely preaching to myself right now. I hope somebody gets something, uh, but I'm glad in my spirit right now. Uh, Exodus 17, 14 through 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Am Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called its name the Lord is my banner, Jehovah, which is Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because the Lord was sworn, has sworn, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And not specifically Amalek, but all of my enemies. Thank you, Lord. And so the Lord is my banner, Jehovah Nisi. That's actually one of my favorite Jehovah names, Jehovah Nisi. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It just feels good to say Jehovah Nisi. Amen. Hallelujah. And, the, and to understand this banner. Right. And so we see in like some of the old if you watch uh, some of the old, uh, you know, uh, medieval movies when they go to war, when they go and they set up their camps right across the, from each other. And they, before they go and negotiate and figure out they're actually going to go to war, they set up their banner, their flag. Hallelujah. That you know that what nation this is. Thank you, Jesus. And so what they're saying, Jehovah Nisi means is that before I go to war, hallelujah, the Lord is my protection. The Lord is actually going to fight for me. My banner is God. That means that I don't fight. God fights. He's Jehovah that will fight my battle and defeat Amalek, Amalek and all of mine enemies. Thank you, Jesus. And, and it disturbs me. Hallelujah. This is recorded and some people ain't going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. It disturbs me that some Christians have such allegiance to flags, but don't have no allegiance to the banner of God. You don't know him as Jehovah Nisi, but you but you will take a flag and, and have more allegiance to that, to God. How dare we? Now, that's for any nation, not just America. But our ultimate banner is the banner of God. Before we throw up any banner, 
Thank you. And I don't want to uh, offend any veterans that fought for our country. I thank you for what you've done. I truly do. I am grateful to be in America. My point to us is that our protection, our comfort is not in America. We say that Christians are blessed to be here in America. Maybe so, maybe not. But our protection belongs to God. It is God who is our banner. It is God who creates our comfort in America. It's God who gives us our freedom. And if God took us out of here and to another place, I trust that God will continue to sustain us once more. And for me, and for me, if God decides to put me to a place where I'm martyred, then I'll say yay and amen, because that's what I'm supposed to do. And I'll take that as well. So I don't need no protection outside of God. I want whatever God's will is. I want his banner all over me. He is my Jehovah Nissi. Thank you, Jesus. You are my banner, Lord God. I'll put your name out there wherever I go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so the Lord, the Lord told Moses to in the in that in, the, in 13, he says, write this for a memorial. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord actually opened up, opened my understanding on this to this morning. So we are to remember how God blesses us. Amen. We are to remember how God blesses us so we can stand on those in future revelations. Yeah, yeah. What I mean by that is if that you were broke and you had no money to pay your rent. And out of nowhere, you're able to pay your rent. Then God can do that again. Now, I'm being, be a great steward of what God gives you. But he, he puts you through these moments to show what he's able to do. Yes. Don't take down from what he's able to do. So that's why he says to write it as a memorial. Every time I bring you through something to write it as a memorial, because just as I brought you through this one time, I need you to remember that I'm the God that doesn't change. If I was Jehovah Nissi once, I'll be Jehovah Nissi twice. If I was Jehovah Jireh once, I'll be Jehovah Jireh twice. I'll be Jehovah Jireh as much as you need me to be. Because that's who I am. That's what comes with my name. That's what comes with my covenant. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just want to encourage somebody. God, whatever he's done for you in the past, he ain't changed his mind. He's not doing things differently. Oh, glory. So whatever he's however he's blessed you in times past, he's willing and able to do it this way. You just got to make a, mem a memorial unto him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shalom. Let's look at J Judges 6, 23 through 24. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Judges 6, 23 through 24. Thank you, Lord. Then the Lord said to him, peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. To this day, it is still in Oprah, Ophrah, one of them, of the, oh, God, oh Lord, help me. Abiez, Abiez writes, thank you, Jesus. Um, amen. Whatever that means. Uh, but what, but what, what happens here is that Gideon has to, to to be encouraged uh, in his spirit that he was able to, he was going to have to go before the enemies and to protect um, Israel. And then an God sent an angel to be a witness unto him to give him a promise that the Lord is going to work this thing out. And so he, co he comes to know God as Jehovah Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, I believe, see, he even built an altar, just like the memorial that, Mo that Moses had to do. He built an altar in that place. And they say it's still standing when they wrote this. I don't know if it's still standing now, but it stood a long time. Meaning just to kind of testify that God is who he's always been. We understand more and more day by day. And I thank the Lord for fresh revelations of who he is. But what he's done for you once, he'll do it for you as many times as he needs, as he leads it to a point where you actually need it. But we have to remember about the strong hand of God and how he brings us out and what he's able and willing to do for us that we can stand on those. We shouldn't waver. We shouldn't waver. We should have memorials all up in our mind and on our spirit about what God has done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I wanted to just share a couple of uh, a quick story. I remember when I first got in, uh, actually going back for, you know, I, I was I was semi raised in church. Uh, amen, Divina. We were we went sometimes, um, but I knew that I was supposed to pray. Amen. But I, I didn't understand prayer. And, and, I, and I think many people today still don't really understand prayer. And there were certain things that I that put me at a disadvantage because I didn't understand and that I, I understood that I'm to cry out to God when when disaster strikes and there's basically nothing I can do, meaning that, you know, I don't have to pray to God about, you know, my, my car is flat. 
I don't have to pray to God about, you know, which way do I take to work. But if somebody gets cancer, oh, that's the time to pray. If I've done all I can to try to come up with the rent money and I can't come up with it, that's the time to pray. Or if I'm stressed out and my job, they're acting crazy and I've done all I can and I'm about to get fired, that's the time to pray. That was my, that's the way I lived my life until a moment, until I, the Lord showed me what it meant to acknowledge him in all his ways. And once he showed me that, I was able to correct my prayers and be able to also add and reveal and hand over, yield to God, the little things in my life that I didn't think he was concerned about. And then so that moment, he becomes, for me, in that revelation, the God of little things, the God of the details of my life. I don't know the Jehovah name for that, but that was the revelation for me, is that, that he's a God of detail concerned about the most fine, the most minute details of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember when, when I, you know, the Lord called me to the ministry a long time ago, and I didn't share it with nobody. And I got to a point, and I was driving myself crazy trying to figure out how to get in a position, faith remembers this time, where I wanted to get a, a, my minister's license. I, was, I got all the books I was supposed to read. I made my wife do some things in her life that the Lord hadn't convicted her uh, because I wanted her to look a particular part that I felt I had to look in, in front of a, a particular organization that I can get my license. Why? Because there was an insecurity about my abilities to be able to study and discern the word of the Lord that I can teach and preach to other people. There was a major insecurity that I had about that. And the piece of paper, this minister license was going to be the thing that helped me. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to declare right now to the Lord, this is our 14th week. This is our 14th week that I am delivering a message unto a hearer. I don't know who's getting anything out of this one, but to a hearer that, that, whoa, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so what God has shown me in these 14 weeks is that, Isaac, your ministry is validated by me. You've seen how I've shown up for you Sunday after Sunday, and I've taken your small understanding, and I've taken your little faith, and I've taken the few hours you give me to study, and I've given those things life, not for you, but for my people. Hallelujah. But Isaac, glory, hallelujah, my hand is on you. My hand is on you, and I'm going to make, I'm going to give wings to those words. And so now, even today, I know God as Jehovah, my validation. God is the one that has validated the ministry that he's put inside of me. And I say this to say, because I want you all to start digging into your own lives. Hallelujah. God has revealed himself to you in a way that maybe you, you didn't understand, but it's the thing that has drawn you closer. And like he's told other people, I want you to start remembering those things. Let us be more intentional about remembering what God has done and sharing this with other people, sharing our testimony. We overcome by the words of our testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we should go forth with all the revelations and the things that God gives us that you know why? Because that's just not the things that he's done. That's him revealing himself unto us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God does doesn't, oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to stay in my seat this week. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But God reveals himself to a man or that we understand who God is by our experiences. And what he is to us is according to the faith that we have about what he brings us through. Thank you, Lord. I really don't care. And, and Lord, receive this. I don't care if you know how to say YHWH. I don't care if, I, if you know how to say Yahweh. Lord, receive this in the name of the Lord. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hallelujah. But what you do need to stand on is every single test and trial that the Lord brought you through. Every single revelation that God has brought you through. Every single thing that you have come through is the way that God is taking you beyond the understanding of how to pronounce his name and making himself a very personal God, a present help in the time of need. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. You just can't know him. You can't know him until you know him by the power 
power of his hand. Hallelujah. He said with his outstretched hand, hallelujah, that he was going to bring Israel to salvation. And that's the same thing that he's doing for you and I. With his outstretched hand, he's revealing himself day by day that not only is, hallelujah, not only is he say he is, but he's, you know, because you've experienced him by who he is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to go to Isaiah uh, 9. Verses six, Isaiah chapter nine, verses six. I'm coming to a close. I'm out of breath. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm giving it my all, y'all. I don't know. I don't know what better to do. I'm just not talented enough to give it 50 percent. If I don't give it my all, then I'm not talented enough. I'm not that preacher that can do this. I'm trusting in God right now and I'm giving him everything I got. I pray that somebody's getting something, but I know he's getting the glory. I will not withhold anything that he puts in my spirit in this moment because it's about him. So let us look at Isaiah nine verses six. Hallelujah. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, comma, Counselor, comma, Mighty God, comma, Everlasting Father, comma, Prince of Peace. It should say comma, etc. But this was a prophecy of Isaiah who was blessed. Uh, we talked about him recently. Uh, was that last week that we talked about Isaiah in the name of Jesus? After we, I told you, all after chapter six, his ministry took off from chapter seven there on. And this is after chapter seven. The Lord started to give him things that he didn't even understand. He gave him prophecies that no man understood. Um, but but it's, we, under, we can get it now because we're after the fact. But what, what's going on right here is that this is a prophecy about the given son, the savior, about what his name will be. But, but he didn't necessarily give us a name. But what did he give us? He gave us wonderful, right? He gave us counselor. Amen, amen. He gave us mighty God. And so when we look at the, the L's and the, and the Jehovah's and what those mean, there are a couple of familiar ones right here because mighty God was El Shaddai. Remember, that was God Almighty. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And everlasting father was El Olam. That was God eternal, God everlasting. And the Prince of Peace was Jehovah Sh uh, Shalom. I'm pretty sure there was a Jehovah or El that went along with Counselor. There was a Jehovah or El that went along with Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But the revelation that Isaiah has right now is that within his name will be every revelation that God has given from the times past will be encompassed in this one name of the given son, of the given son, the savior that we all know who he is, but they didn't know at the time. But this was a very powerful prophecy for us on this side of grace. Hallelujah. I don't know what it meant to them. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But what he's saying is this name, this name is going to contain all of the revelations. Oh, hallelujah. All of the revelations. Thank you, Lord. All of the revelations that have ever been revealed unto a man by God himself. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the name of the Savior contains this for us. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew 121. I promise I'm almost done. Matthew 121. Matthew 121. Hallelujah. And she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Thank you, Jesus. The name Jesus literally means Jehovah is salvation. Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. Hallelujah. The mission of Jesus was that he would save his people from their sins. A couple things going on right here is that God had done a lot of things for people. God had a lot of revelations and he blessed the children of Israel until this moment. But there was something that he had not done. He had not given them a way to be freed from their sins. That was not a revelation known yet. Amen. If we look at all the L's and all the Jehovah's, then we can if we look at salvation from the part from the, the point of God sustaining us. Yes, they knew salvation that way, that, that God would sustain them and provide everything and protect them in the time of trouble. 
But the play on words right here is that we go from salvation of God providing everything to sustain your life on, on earth to now in the name Je oh, hallelujah, in the name Jesus, that God would provide a way for you to have salvation eternal in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. So all the L's, all the Jehovah's were for the salvation of, of our flesh. But the name Jesus, when Jehovah becomes salvation, was for the eternal soul. And that through this son, this given son, even though in his, when we call his name, we're calling every revelation. Hallelujah. We also have a brand new fresh revelation in the name of Jesus is that Jehovah will now provide a means to deal with the sin in our bodies. It was no longer that we had the law, but it was that we could have glory, hallelujah, through the Holy Ghost that we could have the Spirit of God that would free us from the bondage of sin. It was a, it was a new word. It was hallelujah. It was a, a fresh revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, glory, hallelujah. So when we call on Jesus, we not only call on God Almighty, we not even call on God our peace. Hallelujah. We not even call on God, on, on, on God our banner. Thank you, Jesus. But when we call on the Jesus, on the name of Jesus, we call call on oh, oh glory we call on I am that I am we call on everything that we need in that moment for God to sustain us on earth and to prepare us a place in eternity with him all of that is in the name of Jesus all of that is bottled up in this name of Jesus hallelujah glory hallelujah but it's a revelation it's a revelation you know him you know him as you allow him into your life you uh, you know him as you take him up on his arm you know him as you as you pray to him and you see him bring you through. You know him through the revelations, the time that he's brought you up, the time that he's lifted you up, the time that he saved you, the time that he helped your marriage, the time that he protected your children. Hallelujah. The time that he validated your ministry. Glory. Whatever it is. Hallelujah. Whatever revelation it is. And God is still that. And through this name, Jesus, he becomes very much more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to stay in my seat. Glory, though, I want to shout. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I got one hug. Glory. I got one last thing I'm going to do, then I'm going to wrap it up. And I want to let everybody know that we are going to have our virtual altar call. And we have a way to take you into your own private room with one other individual to be able to pray for you. So that if you're ashamed, if you're embarrassed about what you need prayer for, it's not in everybody's business. So we do have the ability, and we are prepared today as we wrap this up, that if there's anyone who is seeking prayer, uh, or salvation, or if you just want somebody to pray that the Lord will continue to give you fresh revelations, we are prepared today to take you into your own private uh, altar or, or room with, with someone that can pray for you. I want to open up that right now, that, that that's going to happen in one moment. And I want everybody to, now I have to be careful with this, so I want to ask everybody to be able to respect what I'm about to say right here, because I, I, I feel okay in the, in the spirit, but I know that theologically some people may, may not like this. Take it with your word. This is completely Isaac right now. This is, this is completely Isaac. I want to make that known right now. But when I was working on this and I was looking at these words that God uses and that the writers oftentimes took a play in words, as I've been studying, meaning if one word sounds like something, sometimes they'll use it to make a point. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Like, um, I can't give you an example. Uh, um, I can't give you an example right now. Uh, uh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm just too excited to get to this point. But while we're studying, I want to go to Isaiah 12, too, really quickly. My wife gave me that look like, boy, what's wrong with you? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for my wife. She keeps me grounded. Amen. So she, I might hear from her in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Like, boy, you need to stop saying stuff like that. But Isaiah 12, too, in the name of the Lord. And in Isaiah 12, too, it says, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for Yah, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, the Lord is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. And so what we see is that uh, Jehovah means to become or to become known. And so in the second half of the scripture, he says, he also has become my salvation. Right. So we can use our imagination here to say that Jehovah salvation, which sounds like the meaning of Jesus. Amen. Because God Jehovah means to become. So in that, when he has also become, 
We can say Jehovah salvation, right? And if we can say Jehovah salvation, then we can actually reread Isaac 12, Isaiah 12, 2 as this. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, the eternal, almighty, everlasting God is my strength and song. And it says semicolon Jesus. Jesus. Meaning Hallelujah. Jesus is our savior. Jesus is the manifest, uh, the express image of God. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Everything that God is, the fullness of God lies in Jesus bodily. Amen. I don't know if this is the prophecy that, that God gave Isaiah in this moment, but it makes a lot of sense to me. And if it's not, if it's not theologically correct, then bear with me. But there's a point that still can be made and it still reigns true. And that God, who was, is your salvation, has now become your eternal salvation. Hallelujah in Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so I want to invite and open up right now. Hallelujah for anyone. Thank you, Lord. If you don't know, if you feel that there's a concern that I don't know if I have this revelation, I don't know if I know God, Jesus this way. I don't know if I have extended, if I've gone if, and extinguished all that God is in my life and all that I need him to be. Hallelujah. If I know who Jesus is, but I don't have a personal relationship with him that I can look back over my life and name and see his hand all in my life, whatever it is, if I've never had that name, if I can't identify with the revelation of the name, I know the name, I know what it is, but I can't relate to it. I don't feel it in my spirit. I don't get excited when I hear the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Then I'll offer to you right now, anyone that so whosoever will, if there is anyone today, if there is anyone today, hallelujah, that if maybe you don't know Jesus at all, or or maybe you just want to know him on a different way and you want a, a more intimate relationship with him. Whatever it is, hallelujah, we can do this in several ways. You can raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can put it in a chat box. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever it is, if you just say, look, I, no, nobody's going to judge you. I just want you to know right now that was one of the concerns of mine when I went into the altar is that if I went for prayer, then everybody think I was sinning. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You walk into a blessing. Don't be afraid about what people think of you in this moment. You walk into your blessing. Walk into your identity. Walk into your call. Be chosen in this moment if God is pulling on you right now. So don't you be embarrassed. Don't you be concerned. But I just want to make it I just want to make it available right now if there's anyone that's not comfortable with your relationship. If you, don't, if you, can, if you feel you just need a fresh dose of, of, oh, hallelujah. If you need a fresh dose of Jesus, hallelujah. If you want to just know him better, thank you, Jesus. And I'm not going to ask you all day, but it's very important to me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Then you can do so now. You can make it known in the chat. You can raise your hand. And, and the urgency in this message uh, on Friday, and I want to invite everybody on here. Um, most, a lot of us on, on here are part of a part of this pro, this group uh, assembly called the Power of Prayer, and that is a prayer line on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, it, it has worked miracles in my life just being able to have the presence of God on a more routine basis. Actually, some of the people that I said in the beginning that said their life is more blessed in the pandemic than it was before is because they've also used the power of prayer as a resource to be able to give to God and to be in a position or be in the environment to hear God and to give him more glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But what happened on Friday is I got a fresh dose of where we are. The Lord really made it where we are. And be scared if you're going to be scared. Be encouraged if you're going to be encouraged. Whatever the Lord does to you in this moment. Uh, Bishop Swansea told me a long time ago uh, when I let him know that we were going forth with this church. He said, preach Jesus and don't forget to remind them about the second covenant. Uh, the second coming of Jesus. And that's one thing that I feel I have not done is I have not been intentional or urgent about reminding everyone of where we are in the season. Now, I am not a student of end times. I'll be the first to admit that I have a very foundational understanding of the sequence of how we, t we get up out of here. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And don't judge me by that. And if you feel that devalues this ministry, then whatever it is, go wherever the Lord has you to go. But what I want to say to you is that I have to do my job to make it known to everyone of the season that we are in, not because somebody told me. So don't take it that way because I see it myself. I'm concerned about it myself. 
Now, hallelujah. Some people say, and this is okay, some people say, amen, come Lord today. Amen. My ministry says, if this is the last hour, let me go find one more person to bring with me. That's where I'm at. So, Lord, because I see your hand and I see the day is approaching, then, Lord, I'm not going to say come right now, even though that I know that I'm blessed and I know where I go. But what I'm going to say is, Lord, can you extend the time 30 more seconds? Let me tell one more person about you. Let me go and tell one more person about the plan of salvation that they can know you and they can receive it, too. So take your take it out. Take this wherever you want. I don't care if you offend it. I really don't right now because this is me. This is Isaac speaking for Isaac's ministry. My ministry is that, Lord, if you just like Abraham said, he said, Lord, what if you find 50? And the Lord said, if I find 50, I'll hold my hand. He said, what if you find 40? He said, Lord, if I find 40. Amen. So I'm asking, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, if there's somebody right now that's in my network, in my sphere of influence, on promise, that comes to promise, that is not certain about your calling and election, if you're not certain what happens to you on the other side of eternity, now I'm begging you. Now I'm begging you. This is Isaac begging you. Please, you do not have to get off of this line. You do not have to get off of this line without knowing for certain where you stand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And I want to thank you, the Lord, for all the people who've been praying for me. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that the Lord continues to correct me as I become more mature and in, 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 as a minister unto his people, that I can be mindful of where we are and, 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 and have the boldness to remind everyone of the day that we are in. We are absolutely in the last days. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we don't have any hands lifted up. And I gave a minute in case there was someone that wanted to go at the last minute. Amen. Amen. Amen.